Well, we start out with the fact that when you're lower decks, it's communal showers with no boundaries for genders. This is a problem, but not the way you might think. It's not awkwardness because they're naked in front of each other, but because Mariner and Jet, who has taken Boimler's place in their little foursome, are both alphas. Thus, they turn up the force of the sonic shower, one-upping each other, until they drive everyone else in the room and look to be on the verge of cracking their own bones open. Just another day in the lower decks. After the titles, we learn they're dealing with a collector who has died. Someone like Kivis Fajo, or that guy with the reality stone from Infinity Wars. The Cerritos is here to catalog his pile of crap. Make sure nothing is going to kill anyone before the stuff gets put on eBay. Want me to head it up? No, I think this is a fine first job for our brand new head of security. Lieutenant Keishon, welcome to the Cerritos. Rapunky, when he joined the Seven. He's of the Darmok species. The Universal Translator has been updated to translate their language now. Mostly. Mariner and company will be helping Cation out, with Jet, as stated, taking Boimler's place. Boimler is far, far too busy on the Titan. <laughs> They're off sorting out a packled ship, and they send it packing. To the delight of everyone, save Boimler, who is far too preoccupied with shitting himself. As for the Cerritos... It's no problem, sir. Or should I say, it's no beast at Tanagra. Oh. <laughs> More like yeah. suck up at Tanagra. There's still some adjustments taking place. Yeah, about time, Starfleet. What you do, stop to debate the human rights of a robot? The collectors are so bitter over data. So while they get to deal with a dead hoarder, Boimler's trying to keep up with the lore of the Titan, as it seems they have continuity over here that he doesn't know about. The Packlets are after Veruvian, but using it is beyond their abilities, suggesting somebody else is involved. Given the Packlets' intelligence, it's a very strong suggestion, like a loud throat clearing and repeating it in a raised, firm voice kind of suggestion. The plan is to put some of their people on the planet disguised as miners so that bing bang boom, we can track it back to whoever's been propping up the pack lids. While they deal with that, the Cerritos crew has dangers of their own. Yeah, I guess more time to enjoy Kalis's fornication helmet. Oh, that's fun. Safety first. Not so surprising. I know someone who struts into the room wearing a Doctor Strange cloak while the theme from 2001 plays. At that final crescendo, he yells, Dormammu, I've come to bargain! Well, it had to happen. They set off the booby trap made if anybody tries to take his stuff after he's dead. Which, by all rights, I should mock him for, since he doesn't need it anymore. But then again, that is the entire basis of Temple Death Trap, so, you know, we've got to respect him even though he is crossing genre conventions. Kayshawn gets zapped trying to protect the others. That beam turned him into a puppet! Oh, in the words of his people, Pinocchio, no strings on him. Yeah, genres have gotten their wires crossed today. Somewhere there's a dude in a feathered headdress wondering why his llamas keep crashing and stranding his warriors in isolated places. Well, Mariner's plan is to work their way through the ship to shut down the power and thus disable the traps. But Jet steps on her big moment by suggesting they take the safer route of heading to the escape pods, which is less badass but also less lethal, and everyone else seems to prefer that if given the option. Which differentiates them from the Titan, where the crew talks shit about the Enterprise D not being badass enough, to Boimler's horror. And speaking of horror... After narrowly escaping the death trap, they come across the room full of skeletons, including what is presumably that of Spock 2 from the animated series, you know, the giant one? Well, it's coming into play soon, because Tenneco Guy is the one who set off the booby trap because he stole Kalis fucking helmet. Yes, the booby trap was specifically in place in case Kalis fucking helmet was taken, because obviously Kalis fucking helmet was so important. Well, as he's defending his decision, he gets crushed by Spock 2's bones. Now, Mariner won't stop being bitter about not following her far more dangerous plan and starts getting on Jet, saying he's just trying to present some kind of phony image by worrying about Rutherford and Tendi's safety. Mariner insists her judgment is right, which is undermined by swatting around a flying Roomba until they all become hostile and attack. 
Speaking of bad decisions, the team inserting themselves in with the miners goes off mission in order to deal with a pack lid. Oh, but this ain't your lucky. Huh? It's a pile of snacks. Hey, those miners are stealing our snacks. Meanwhile, as Mariner and Jet both admit they've kind of sucked on this job, they decide to ask Tendi and Rutherford for ideas. And they have some. In fact, if we had asked them at the beginning, they likely could have skipped all the death traps and wouldn't be facing death by vacuum cleaner right now. Meanwhile, the Titans Away team is trapped and they can't get beamed out on account of the ion cloud. So they're ready to go down in a blaze of glory. hoo Only Boimler, he's like, no, I did not sign up to die in a phaser fight. I signed up to be an explorer and maybe join a string quartet. Meanwhile, Captain Friedman, who is unhappy because her evaluation said she micromanages, finds out that there are escape pods launching from the collector ship. The ship tried to collect us, Captain. Where's Kayshawn? Kayshawn, when he became a puppet. This is what being hands off gets me? She will never again! I think a similar sentiment was behind Kalis getting that helmet. As for the Titan team, Boimler manages to clear things up for the other three to beam up safely. But he has a problem. They beam him up, only they also don't. He returns via shuttlecraft. Yep, it's the old Riker duplication two-step. Appropriate for an episode with Spock 2's skeleton, I suppose. Well, one Boimler gets sent back to the Cerritos as an ensign, and he is not happy. But his friends are. Even Mariner. Hell, especially Mariner. Wow, if you think you can leave us for the big time only to come crawling back... You would be right about that. Get over here, man. Sit down. To use Darmok speak, God is in his heaven and all's right with the world. The two opening episodes, which I admit I should have covered closer together, are in a way a commentary on how the rebooted Star Trek of Discovery and Picard have gone in such a different direction than what made the TNG era what it was. The idea of darker storylines and serialization is not inherently bad though the execution was questionable. And the sneering at the prior error it all seemed unjustified, undeserved, and alienating. Lower Dex asserts that it is unapologetic about following in the spirit of the TNG era, no matter how much others might insist it's passé. But these two stories aren't about sneering at that either, but rather about illustrating how there's still stories and drama to be had. The complexity of relationships is a huge part of that, there's Ransom, Mariner, and the Captain. And with Mariner and Boimler and her escape, compared to how it is when he actually physically comes back, Mariner crying out, It's my friend! with true excitement. The relationship between Rutherford and Tendi, as shown by her mad need not to be left behind. And the dynamic among the group that we see. All this in big plots, Lower Decks gives a sense that Star Trek is in the same place that Riker was in Best of Both Worlds when he talked about becoming too comfortable. And Troy asserting, no, you're happy, you've matured, and you haven't lost a thing. Things don't have to be the way they were forever. There's room to grow. But evolution does not require revolution. Becoming more doesn't mean throwing things away. We can change with the times without needing to stop being who we are. guy got turned into a doll. He'll be back to normal in an hour. 